the Lord who is looking for devout person. First Samuel chapter one, verse one through eleven. When a suffering comes to your life without reason, what is your response? Do you blame God and leave from your faith? Or do you come to the Lord all the more? When suffering comes to your life, come to the Lord. Probably He is preparing something extraordinary that you don't understand. That's why you don't know why suffering comes to you. When suffering comes to your life, God has his plan, something better. The book of 1 Samuel starts with a personal story of a barren woman. From her problem, personal problem, God expands. God expanded his amazing work of salvation for his people. Isn't it awesome that God's wonderful project always starts with a personal story of ordinary people like us? Suffering came to Hannah, who was devout for unknown reason. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. There was a man from Lamathim Zophim, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Ilkana. He was the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of the first was Hena, and the name of the second was Penina. Now Penina had the children, but Hena was childless. Why did he have two wives? Because the first wife, Hannah, had no child. By the way, having two wives was not God's will in any case. Penina had children, a plural, many children, many sons and daughters. That means Hannah tried to have a baby, but she failed for many years, at least, at least 10 years. While Penina kept having children, Sons and daughters, Hannah cried for years after years. Now, what is the problem of not having children for a woman at that time? Even though Hannah was childless without a child, her husband loved her a lot. What, what was her problem? In those days, the people thought when they had no child, she, they, they thought she was cursed from God because of her sin, unknown, hidden sin. Another reason is if she had no child, there's no way to support her life after her husband dies. So there were two reasons why she really wanted to have a child. Many years, more than 10 years, she heard, she needed to hear people's gossip and the wrong accusation of being a sinner. Year after year, this man, Elkanah, would go up from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the house Lord of Hosts at Shiloh. It was there that the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, served as the Lord's priest. So whenever they came to the Lord's house for sacrifice, it wasn't a pleasant memory for uh, Hannah because at at the place of at the place of sacrifice place of um, the joy and the refreshment before the Lord Hannah experienced more despair 
and more the ridicule insert from Penina. As they share the offering meat in family, the Ilkana would have a double portion to Hannah because he especially loved her. However, now the Lord had not enabled her to have children. Her rival wife, Penina, used to upset her and make her worry. Because her husband, Elkanah, loved Hanina more than Penina. So that's why Penina was not happy. So she teased, teased her and upset her, saying, Oh yeah, because Lord cursed you because of your sin. That's why the Lord had not enabled, Lord not, has not enabled your childbirth. Verse 7, Penina would behave this way year after year, not, also, not only one time, more than 10 years. Whenever Hanina went up to the Lord's house, Penina would upset her all the more, saying, the Lord cursed you, so that Hannah would weep and refuse to eat. Verse 3, at year after year, verse 7, year after year. So why, why did why did God put Hannah in this situation? Furthermore, verse 5 and verse 6 clearly says that it was the Lord who blocked her pregnancy. Why? We need to look at the background of these days. It was days of the times of judge, judges. So it was one of the most darkest moments in Israel's history. And the book of Judges are not as famous about the cycle of sin. They worship idols, they rebel against God, they sin, and God brought punishment on them. God brought their enemies, invade their country. And they repent, and saying they cry for help, basically. Oh, we, we did wrong. Please forgive us and save us. And God sent judges and delivered them. But whenever peace, peace came to them, they again sin. They sin again. So this cycle of sin repeats again and again. 12 times or 13 times in the book of Judges for 400 years of period. Isn't it the same for us? Because uh, whenever we have difficult situation or sickness or a problem, or oh, we need help for, for our examination, school exam, that we pray more, we come to church, but whenever we're doing fine, we don't need any, any help from God, we just go out, play with friends on Sunday. We don't care about God's, God's will and His plan. So, these days, the times of judgment, the uh, judges, the author summarized in this last verse of Book of Judges here. In those days, Israel had no king. Each man did what he considered to be right. In fact, Heavenly, God, Heavenly Father was their king, but they didn't want to acknowledge God as their king. So each person behaved whatever they wanted. Main reason of doing this, main reason of this darkest moment in our life is they thought money and earthly blessing. They come to God for money and success, and they had no interest in God's plan and God's promise given to Abraham. To, they are supposed to be channel of God's blessing to all nations. But they were trapped in the cycle of sin as they sought earthly blessings and pleasure. They had no interest in God's kingdom. What about you? You want to get out of cycle of repeated sin? Then focus on God's kingdom. 
and such such spiritual darkness, the Lord wanted to start his work of salvation. That's why he was looking for a devout person here. If you look at verse 2 and 3, you can see a little uh, comparison here. Verse 2, now there are children to Penina, but none to Hannah. And verse 3, it was there that the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, as priests to the Lord. Why, why does the author mention these two priests here? Because they're not related to the, the story of this family at all. But I can say, there are children to Punaina, none to Hannah. And there were priests to Lord in Lord's house in Shallow. But in fact, in reality, no one's there to the Lord's house. That means no one was devoted to the Lord. And there were two sons of Eli, a priest, but they don't, they don't, they don't acknowledge, they despise the Lord. Verse 12 and, and 17 says this way, The sons of Eli were wicked men. They did not recognize the Lord's authority. The sin of this young man was very great in the Lord's sight. For they treated the Lord's offering with contempt. Even they slept with the woman who served in the Lord's house. In this way, they really disgrace God's name and this holy the occupation, this holy uh, the calling as priest. They were not devoted to God. That means God could not use them. God could not reveal His will to them. That's what verse, chapter 3, verse 1 says here. Receiving a message from the Lord was rare in those days. Revelatory visions were infrequent. That means God has not been talking with them for a long time. There's no new message from the Lord. There's no living interaction with the Lord. And this is one sentence symbolized spiritual darkness. What about you guys? Do you getting normal about, about God, about Jesus Christ, about your salvation, about His grace? Do you, do you getting to love Jesus more and more? Otherwise, you are in spiritual darkness. So in this situation, the Lord needed someone who could deliver His message to His people. Now, Think about the Lord's need and Hannah's need. The both needs of Lord's and Hannah's have met in one in common. What? A boy, a devout man, a son. As Hannah needed a son, the Lord needed a faithful priest. That's why the Lord made Hannah pay more attention to God's need in this spiritual dark generation through the suffering. Now Hannah was faithful. Even though suffering came to his life without reason, he all the more focused on the Lord. And he, I'm sorry, she focused on the Lord all the more and let all else go. If, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you for your service. Because you need, you need a devout person. Verse 11, this is a prayer for Han, to prayer of Hannah. She made a vow saying, O Lord of hosts, O Lord of Almighty, if you will look with compassion on the suffering of your female servant. Because I don't care about, I don't care too much about how make my living my old age, but they accuse me of being sinner. They accuse me, that you don't love me. But remember me and not forget your servant. Give me a male child to your servant, then I will give him back to you, to the Lord. 
all the days of his life, and his hair, hair will never be cut. Yeah, this is a sign of dedication. What is the reason for asking a son? It was not to secure her life in old age. She only wanted to confirm that God did not curse her. She prayed this way. Oh Lord, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. All I want to know is that you still love me. And my life, even though I am I'm barren, I have no child. I want to know. I want to confirm that my life, even in this barrenness, even this suffering, is in your good plan. It is like it is, it is like this in our life. Let's say you keep failing to get a job after graduation for many years. I don't want this to happen, but let's let's assume this way. And this would be your prayer. So you want to only get a job. You don't expect, you don't want too much salary out of it. You pray this way. God, if you give me a job, I will bring a year's salary as an offering. As too much? Maybe a month or two months salary as an offering. I just know that you answer to my prayer and you still love me. That's all I need. So I want to confirm that. My life is not total failure. So, this is your confession of faith that the Lord is more important than your job. Now, return to Hannah's story. The Lord finally gave her a son, and as she vowed, she brought little Samuel and let him stay in the Lord's house to serve the Lord for his whole life. Now, Hannah's need was met through the birth of Samuel. And then the Lord's need was met through Samuel's lifelong serving. This was God's plan for Hannah's suffering. After that, if you read the Bible, the Lord gave Hannah more uh, children. Now, through this Samuel, one devout person, the Lord brought a revival to Israel. Once again, we can remember this verse here. The, the channel from the Lord was disconnected because of an unfaithful priest. However, when Samuel dedicated his life to the Lord, the Lord revealed his will for his people again. Samuel taught them the word of God for his life here. Chapter 3, verse 19, Samuel continued to grow, and the Lord was with him. None of his prophecies fell to the ground unfulfilled. Wow. All Israel from Dan to Beersheba realized that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord, and the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, because the Lord revealed himself to Samuel as Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So Samuel led Israel all the days of his life, year after year. Year after year, he used to travel the circuits of Bethel, Gilgal, and Mizpah. He used to judge Israel in all of these places. Amen. From spiritual darkness of the judges, the, the, the era, era of judges, to brightness of God's word, this Samuel led the Israelites. If you want to get out of uh, the cycle of sin, if you want to stop, stop going through the spiritual ups and downs, you should focus on the Lord. You should learn His words and you should know His plan of eternal life so that you will not be captivated, captivated by the desires for earthly things. And Samuel led repentance of Israelite from idol worships here. 
Samuel said to all the people of Israel, If you are really turning to the Lord with all your hearts, remove from among you the foreign gods and the image of Ashtaroth. Give your hearts to the Lord and serve only him. Then he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the Israelites removed the Baal and image of Ashtaroth. They served only the Lord. Amen. It's, this is a real revival. When, when they brought their hearts, they, they turn their heart to the Lord. They give their heart to the Lord and serve only God. This is a revival. Before this, in the days of Judges, when the enemies invaded, they cried for help. They just said, oh, oh Lord, we did wrong. Forgive us and save us. But they didn't turn their heart to the Lord. There's no mention of repentance. That's why they return to idol worship after the Lord provides salvation. But now here, Samuel first asked for their repentance. As they gathered in Mizpah, and they pray for the repentance and restoration, revival of the nation, the Lord miraculously defeated their enemy, the Philistines. When they gather for, for, for their repentance worship, the Philistines come forward and attack the Israelites. But the Lord brought down the thunderstorms and gave strength and put Philistines in panic. In this way, they defeated the Philistines. Surely Samuel brought spiritual revival to the Israelites. Samuel ended the cycle of sin. And Samuel taught them the word of God all his life. So they, they all got to know more about God's will for Israel. They grew up spiritually, whole country, not just one year. Is lifelong ministry. And from this spiritual soil, King David was prepared as a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ, the King of Israel. And David composed many psalms that show his deep understanding of God. All this blessed revival, all this a change of whole nation started from a woman in anguish who dedicated her son to the Lord. Let me finish. Is your life under pressure? Maybe the Lord is looking for a devout man or woman. I hope that would be you. Surely it is true that he is looking for a devout person, his walker in this generation of spiritual darkness. Church is declining these days. Less and less people come to church. It is hard to find the sincere faith because they don't need God in desperate. The pulpit are contaminated with the worldly blessings, worldly messages. If you come to Jesus, if you believe in God, you will be rich. You can be you can succeed in the world. We see the urgency of revival in the Western culture, Western churches here. In this way, the church is under oppression and ministers are in anguish. Now, God is going to start new work through a devout person. When the suffering comes to you, no reason. If it is not from your sin, then God has a wonderful plan behind that. Then focus on the Lord and let everything else go away. Forget about other things. Only focus on the Lord. Dedicate your life to the Lord. Then you will see new work of God, revival in your life and your church. I hope, I hope you see 
God's plan in your suffering this way. And I hope you will experience God's revival in your life. God bless you.